right, welcome back to Panzer Guns and Ammo, guys. Hey, goes. <laughs> no. So today, what are we gonna go over? So this is my Reming Remington Arm Special Edition uh, Flintlock. So there was uh, only 500 of those made in uh, mid 90s, and I was able to put my hand on one of those. Isn't she a freaking beauty? So to my followers, <laughs> this is not at all what I usually uh, review on this channel or go about or buy. Um, I saw this one, I thought it was a good example, it said it was uh, unfired and all that good stuff. So I thought, it, you know, with the company being defunct, bankrupt, uh, Remington, so that this could actually be a nice uh, wall piece or a collection piece. So anyways, I went ahead and pulled trigger on this one. It, it looks, it is a gorgeous rifle, I must say. All right, so let's uh, let's give you guys a closer look and see up close and personal what this rifle looks like. Here, guys, we got the original box. Um, you can see the stores, the store I went to in the first place. And look at this. This is the original price in Canadian from 1995. Isn't that cool? Very long box. And then inside, you have. You still have the, you still have the start phone. You get the mold where the, the rifle goes. There you go. Very long. So yeah. Pretty cool find. Like I said, guys, here are the uh, document that comes with the uh, right, the flintlock. You got uh, the Remington uh, manual. You got safety firearms. You got this nice little history pamphlet, which is actually kind of pretty cool. It gives you like um, nice little reading here. It's pretty damn cool. You got the certificate of authenticity. You got like the little history behind the, why they did that and a few caution and all that stuff. And here it's the package it comes in. Yeah, so uh, when when Remington decided to do this uh, special edition commemorative piece um, back in uh, the mid 90s, uh, they could have went with a more modern way to make the firearm, but they, they decided not to. So I think this is what kind of set this one apart a little bit. Uh, it's kind of neat to see that the company went to all this trouble to make this very, very nice piece here. So, um, from the, the stock to the barrel to like the, the nice wood, the tiger wood that they use all across is really nice. Oh, I gotta say, it's a very good piece of workmanship for a factory rifle. It's like, if you look at this thing, it's like, look at this. <laughs> this is kind of cool. I really like the, uh, I really like this thing, I gotta say. Uh, it, it is it is a pretty neat uh, rifle. Can't imagine, can't imagine you had to lug this thing around back in the days. That is heavy too and uh, quite cumbersome. Remington keeps saying in their little pamphlet there, they could have made it more modern. They could have made it, uh, you know, fast, computerized, using machine and everything. They decided not to. They wanted to make it the way Elephant, I don't know if I say his, right, his name right, but Elephant would have wanted it back then. So basically, each of those rifles are, are basically all made by hand or assembled by hand anyways um, and mostly like mostly everything is made by hand um, so base you have no two rifle like so that limited limited production 
each rifle is basically like its own entity, which is pretty cool, which make it a bit more unique. It's more like a custom job, really. So I know this was Fast and Furious, guys. Uh, I, this is not my realm of expertise. Um, I do not, I do not fire a black powder weapon. I don't own any other black powder weapon, but I do like this one. I think this one is a is a very nice example of what it could be. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, quick uh, overview of my uh, 1816 long rifle from Remington um, so guys stay tuned I got some more stuff coming into the channel uh, thank you very much for subscribing watching please comment like share the video and uh, I'll see you in the next one thanks for watching this is Spencer at Guns and Ammo signing out no la bas ghost no no la bas la bas no la bas Hey, said no.